Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I haven't been posting recently and I'm sorry for that. Um, I'm gonna try my best to post as consistently as possible. So if you were here before, on my last video we discovered a new software called Snap and that's where I am right now. And here I feel like it's easiest to learn um, programming. If you're completely new to programming, this is the best place to begin. So last time we just had a tour and we did a really small program, a very simple one, to get familiar with the blocks here. Um, today we're going to be doing something similar. We'll just be doing something more advanced. So today we'll be going over if and if else. Um, and these are basically the two condition blocks. They're actually very important for programming. This Without, without if and if else, there would be no programs. Um, well, it's very unlikely to have programs without these two blocks in it. So um, today we'll be reviewing these. And for that, we're going to be doing two different programs. So the first one is divisible by 2. So we're going to be, um, the user will enter a number. And then the program will tell them true or false, whether if it is um, divisible by, by 2, then the program will return true. And if it is not divisible by 2, then the program will return false. And basically, uh, that's the first one. The second practice we will be doing with these blocks is a small animation. And it's basically like this sprite, we're going to change the costume. So this is a sprite, and we're going to change the costume to make it look like a ball or like an apple or something that's round. And um, if it's on the edge, then it will bounce back. It'll like turn a certain degrees and bounce back. Basically, so it's going to be bouncing all over the place. And um, that's for if and if else, right? So we're going to be using these two blocks. All right, let's begin with the very first practice. So I'm going to first of all save this, and I'm going to call it video number two, um, divisible by two. All right, so we're going to start with the control section. Obviously, we want to identify when the program starts, so when this flag is clicked. So we're going to pull out this block. When the flag is clicked, or in other, in English words, when the program begins. You want to think in very fine details. What is the very first step you want to do? The very first step is obviously to ask the user what their number is. So you want to go to sensing. That's where we can find the block. Ask. So pull that and connect it. Then you can change whatever writing is in here. So I'll just say enter a number. And it's going to wait. Then basically what the user will enter will be saved in here in the answer. And you want to make a variable for that. And you can go in this variable section and make a variable right there. And this variable will basically save the answer somewhere. It's basically like a storage box to save the answer. So I'm going to just call this the input. You can call it number. You can call it the answer. Um, I prefer to call it input because now we know that this is the user's input. So I'm going to pull out this block set. And I'm going to um, select the variable input. And I'm going to set input to the answer. So now whatever the user enters is saved in this storage box called input. Um, after this, you want to check. Now you want to go to controls. And you want to check if. And obviously we know if a, number, if, if it's, if a number's last digit is divisible, sorry. If a number mod 2 is 0, meaning if a number, when a number is divided by 2, if the remainder is 0, for example, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and there is no remainder. And that's how we know that the number is divisible by 2. So that's why we need to bring this if else button. You can also use this if one, but we need two options, right? If it is divisible by 2, then do this. Else, do this. So we have to have two sides to this. So we cannot use one block. If, now we have to go to operators. This is called a predicate. And we have to put a predicate in here. Look, um, so as you can tell, you can only put certain blocks that match this design. So uh, this block matches this design. These blocks match it. Like, for example, you cannot put these round blocks in here. Well, I think you can. Never mind. Okay, 
So we have to first check if this input mod. So you want to you want to pull out this block mod. If this input, if the user's input divided by two mod, meaning divided by two in the remainder of that, is equal to zero. Okay. So this might look confusing, but it's very simple. So it's basically like if the remainder of this number divided by 2, basically. So for example, it's just saying if 6 divided by 2 is 3 and the remainder is 0, and you want to put it in there, then you just basically want to say, you want to say, you can go to looks and grab that block, say, this is or this number is divisible by 2. And if it and if it is not, then you can just duplicate that and say this number is not divisible by 2. Very simple program and you can check if it works. So, uh sorry, the sprite should be in the center. Hold on a second. Alright, go to zero, 0, which is the center. There we go. So, when this flag is clicked, the uh, sprite asks, enter a number. And you want to put in a number. For example, let's just say 12. 12 is obviously divisible by 2. So, enter, and it's going to pop up. This number is divisible by 2. Great! Our program works. Let's try again. Sorry about the blinking cursor. I don't know why that's happening. Enter a number. Um, this number, let's enter 13, which is not divisible by 2. So, this number is not divisible by 2. Great, so our program works. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this. Alright, so we're going to move on to our second practice. This was divisible by 2. If you want, you can just go back in the video and replay this if you want to refresh your brain or if you don't understand something. Um, you can always go down in the comment section below and just ask a question if you, d if you, per if you didn't understand a particular thing. Um, the second section we will be doing, I'm going to open a new project. Oh, I'm sorry about the cursor. Yes, and I'm going to save it first. Same video. And I'm going to save it as a bouncing bright animation a bouncing sprite animation save so obviously the very first thing we want to do if you guessed it you can pause the video and check when the flag is clicked obviously when the program starts um, the very first thing you want to do is that when the program starts you want this to be going on forever right you want the sprite to be going on forever so you're going to just go to control, it's right, we're on control right now, and you want to pull out this forever block. So now we know that it's forever going to do what? Now we don't know what it's going to do forever. So obviously, if you're thinking in very fine details, pause this video, and at least if you don't know, then at least guess what the sprite is going to do forever. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna tell you what it is. So the sprite is going to move forever. Move 10 steps, and 10 is like the speed. So you can move five steps, you can move 20 steps. I like 10 because it is um, an okay speed. So it's gonna move forever 10 steps. But here's the thing. If it moves forever 10 steps, meaning to the right, right, because 10 is positive. So it's gonna move to the right. If it was moved negative 10 steps, it would move to the left. If I press the button, it's going to move to the right forever. And um, the program would obviously freeze after a while, so uh, we shouldn't do that. Um, so forever, move 10 steps. But now you have to have some error checking in here. Error checking means you have to have this if block in here. This if else block. Now we have to check if this bright, we have to check first if this sprite, meaning this sprite right down here, if this sprite is touching the edge of the screen, 
meaning this meaning this white screen if it is touching the edge of the screen then you want to bounce back and if it is not touching the screen then you just want to move right so you want to put this if and else block in the forever because this program will forever be checking whatever you put in here so you want to check again as I said before in sensing if this sprite is touching you can pull out this block touching if it's touching the edge if this sprite is touching the edge then I want to turn a certain number of degrees so that it makes the program more interesting so um, I don't want to turn 15 degrees I'll just ha go on operators and pull out this pick random button so this program will just pick random from any number of degrees so I'll just do I don't know negative 50 to 90 degrees right so it can just go left or right a certain number of degrees so um, it's going to choose a random number so it's gonna turn a certain number of degrees and then it's gonna check that if it is if it is on the edge oops if it's on the edge then bounce back else if it is not on the edge then you just want to keep moving basically right so what this program is saying is that if the sprite touches the edge then it'll pick a certain number of degrees it'll turn and bounce back else it'll just keep moving and that's your if else function and this forever loop it's called a loop so this forever loop will keep checking this over and over and you can also go ahead in this costume section and change whatever costume you want so you can go up here and you can go on costumes and click and choose one from the media library um, what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the paint section and I'm just gonna paint a very simple one so I'll just click I'll paint like a little ball a black one and then I'm just gonna check the center of target it's okay and there we go and there we go so our program works when the flag is clicked this ball it just constantly bounces back and forth and you can always just uh, modify this program if you want you can change this uh, speed so you can make it slower as you can see it's going slower one minute I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna replay it so it's going slower now if you want to make it faster you can do that go ahead and it gets even faster 20 you can make it 50 and I'll go really really fast the program might freeze if that happens so I'm just gonna make it 5 I like the speed. Um, you can also change the number of degrees so you can have it like minus 180 and that might make a huge difference too as you can tell the ball is more ran random to 180. So there, are, um, so there are a lot more options for the ball to bounce in and else move 10 steps so you can change that too. And now it's truly moving at the speed of 5. And basically, guys, that's it. So that was uh, today's lesson on if and if else. Um, what you can do uh, after this video is done is maybe recreate these uh, two um, programs by yourself. Uh, maybe try divisible by three because that is what we will be doing in the next video. So in the next video, we will be doing divisible by three, uh, divisible by four, maybe five as well. And um, actually, you could do divisible by five by yourself. So if you would like, um, try that out. See if it works for you. Um, but we'll be doing that in the next video. And in the next video, we'll also be going through loops, which is this. Loops are forever loop, which you kind of explored in this video, the repeat loop, and repeat until. And basically, that's it for um, right now, guys. That's it for today. Thank you for tuning in and I hope this was interesting. Trust me, as you get to know programming more, it gets really, really fun. So I hope you have an interest in this. If you do, um, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time and have a great day.